Well, that was a brilliant overview of the um, um, extensive uh, pearls that we can we can use to optimise visualisation. Um, now I'm delighted to introduce Lukan Mejef, who's an ophthalmologist based in Bulgaria. Um, he is currently medical director and head of department at the Focus Eye Centre in Sofia, um, where he's a consult uh, where uh, he's worked since 2013. He's a consultant surgeon at the University of the Multidisciplinary Hospital for Active Treatment in Rus and has had. Uh, previous consulting roles at um, other other hospitals. He specialises in retinal pathology, glaucoma surgery, and diabetic macular edema. Uh, Lucan has earned a master's degree in medicine and completed his ophthalmology residency at the Medical University of Sofia. And it gives me great pleasure uh, to introduce Lucan, who's going to talk about the limits of digital visualisation. Lucan. Thank you, Anishani, for the kind invitation. I want to thank to Alcon for uh, having me here on the podium. I will speak about... Uh, uh, what we can do with the digital visualization. Briefly, my disclosure to the presentation. Uh, I'm beginning to think that we uh, might uh, hear the sound light camera action. So, as a surgeons, we like action, but uh, we have the two to be also our directors here. Uh, because uh, for um, in order to have a good image, we need to have good light and good camera. Obviously for a movie we need to, to have a good sound, but it's something else which we will want for the ingenuity to have in the future, because the ingenuity can be perceived as the multimedia center in the operating room. Now in our current environment we do live surgery, we do social media networking, and there are uh, remote observation and mentoring sessions which can be arranged with the ingenuity. So it's completely a new tool in uh, the gen, let's say, uh, millennial and gen Z generation which can, um, they can use it instead of, um, let's say, chatting on Instagram, TikTok, they can do it with their surgical videos and to increase their networking um, capabilities. Apart from that, uh, what is important, when we compare the ingenuity color image, which is in the center, with the classic uh, microscope, frankly, there is not much of a difference, which might explain why there are traditional colleagues which stick to the analog microscopes. Mm -hmm. But when you add the capabilities to modify the image, certainly we see a bunch of different imaging modalities which can increase our perception or detection of the tissues. What I do, I rely on simultaneous contrast concept. Uh, I modify the illumination and as Sumit pointed, we can play with the wavelength to increase the depth of field. This is a well-known concept in the multifocal lenses. EDOF creation with uh, clever combination of wavelength of the light. And last but not least, Ingenuity is the only system, digital uh, uh, visualization system on the, uh, our field, which can provide fluorescent imaging, meaning that we can have a real-time navigation and <coughs> functional data. So, this is some of my toys because I perceive them as a toys. You can modify the illumination or the end illumination of your constellation unit to achieve excitation light for fluorescent imaging. You can use infrared light. You can modify your white light. And in order to have a good image, you need to actually modify the reflections because the camera picks up the reflected light. So it's important with what wavelength you will uh, illuminate the object of your interest and then the camera will take it. And the enormous dynamic range of the ingenuity camera is the perfect match for this director ideology. I will show you why. Here is an example of a regular image uh, and now you will see contrast enhancement. These are custom filters made by me uh, and since every surgeon has his own color perception, he can modify the image 
however it suits his needs. And this uh, um, example, this is neutral light. This is a fundus enhancement, fundus reflex enhancement. Why I call it not red reflex? Because I enhance the yellow reflections. The fundus is orange, let's say, and the orange reflects with the most intensity the yellow wavelength, which is 577, which penetrates better the pieces. We know when we chop the pieces, we lose the fundus reflex. Why? Because the reflection is blocked. So we need to, we need to cleverly pick the wavelength which is most reflected in order to enhance the perception of the fundus reflex. And here you can see that we have sort of preserved pieces transparency. So we can chop safely and when we uh, pick behind the uh, piece, we can see where we are going. Here, what we can do with a regular image, with the ingenuity factor, which is actually increasing of the contrast and the highlights. It's a clever play between them. And here, this is what happens with the regular image and uh, what might happen when you have your own filter and apply ingenuity filter uh, uh, factor. It means that you can boost your own best image. So uh, the options of uh, correcting and enhancing the images are becoming even more accessible because in the previous version we didn't have ingenuity factor which is on a click of a button enhancement. Uh, this is what I want actually, area of interest filtering, not filtering the whole image, but where I want to be filtered. It is important during the steps of the surgery like capsule rexis like chopping in glaucoma surgery. If we have a drag and drop area, like an arch, like a ring, like an uh, area which we can place on the trabeculum and only this area to be filtered, rest of the image to be a natural appearing eye because some of our filters make the eye appear unnatural. So we need to modify our perception and we develop a habit during our residency that I looks like a normal eye, not like a filtered one. So this is an um, overlay achieved by mounting a two ingenuity systems on the same microscope and obviously in post-processing and editing they are stuck together. Just to il illustrate the idea of area of interest filtering. So, we can have autofluorescence, and this is without any dye. So, this is playing with the color channel. And we can see the scleral vessels, collector channels, probably. And this is just to show the resolution. This is back of the eyelid, of course. But at least it looks really spectacular. So, <laughs> yeah, autofluorescence. Infrared imaging, just to show that the camera of the ingenuity is able to perceive the infrared lights and you can do a mabography with ingenuity. Who will do it with that? I don't know. <laughs> but again, this is to show the enormous capabilities of the ingenuity camera. Now, this is something new. You modify the light of your microscope to look completely different than the normal. And then you apply a digital filter, which might increase the color separation. You see the wrinkles of the cornea and uh, the edge of the rexis. It shines. It's not black and white. It shines. Uh, I'm not sure that this is the best approach, but still shows where we need to go we, or what we need to explore how the modification of the light can increase the capabilities of our digital system. That is why the world is going to fully digital microscope systems, meaning that the ingenuity and the microscope should be one together. So this is an example of such modification. And uh, I want to 
show you how the pieces are shining. So we have shiny reflex, meaning that it is really strong. And we can see what we are doing. And this is my last filter, which I think is the best, but this is my opinion. And it is combination between, between a digital filter and polarized light. Actually, pretty simple solution to polarize the illumination, but you will get rid of the reflections. You can increase the contrast. It is well known from histology that polarized light can increase the contrast in the tissue and the color separation. Also, it might boost the depth of field. Now, you will uh, see probably a moment where there will be a reversed pupillary block and you observe uh, the position of the posterior capsule. Just a moment. Uh, while that happens, see the details in the iris. So the iris looks really spectacular to me here. And also with this filter, the eye is more or less normal as appearance. Here is the reverse pupillary block, and you can see the movement of the posterior capsule, how we lose, how we lost the focus. Now the focus is uh, uh, maintained because we uh, handled the pupillary block. But with this appearance, I would accept it as a normal eye, not the eye from the cartoons. Uh, the vessels of the conjunctiva, uh, conjunctiva are well aligned, so everything is seen. Fluorescent imaging, anterior segment, fluorescent angiography. Collector channels you might see here. Uh, you might see conjunctival vessels. This is example of, a, of iris cyst. Uh, it's shown to be uh, said that it's possible. For anterior segment, the fluorescent angel has really limited, uh, let's say, indications, but for posterior segment, for a vital retinal surgeon, it might be a game changer, especially in vascular diseases. And lately, we found some interesting changes in patients with epiretinal membranes. Here, fluorescent guided and the laser. For the first time, we are like uh, neurosurgeons. We have navigation during the uh, surgery, and we can be highly selective with what we are doing. Here. Interesting example, diabetic case with clocked venous vessel. And then you can see an uh, embolus passing. And later on, after depression, you might see a re-perfusion of this vessel. So these are phenomena that are not normally seen during the surgery. And uh, it, they are quite useful. And last but not least, this is a fluoroscopic vitrectomy. There is no better staining agent for the peripheral vitreous than the fluorescein. It appears lately because all the dyes, triamcinolone or wooden base, they cover the surface, but don't, they don't penetrate inside the vitreous. With fluoroscopic visualization and the ingenuity, you might see quite well how much vitreous is inside the eye, and it is especially useful for younger surgeons, which need to first identify where is the vitreous and then to remove it. So, thank you. Thank you, Luke, and that was a fascinating um, uh, talk showing us how spectacular the visualization can be with different filters. Um, so. I'm going to open up uh, to a few questions, if that's all right. Um, Cook, how does presbyopia affect the surgical image perception in a classic analog microscope and the, then the digital 3D scissions? Are there differences? Yeah, it's uh, uh, not commonly known that the uh, depth of field of the analog microscope is directly related to the accommodation of the surgeon. That is why younger surgeons uh, take every image is granted and it is good, it's awesome and everything is fine. But when we go press biopic, uh, 
when uh, you are in the operating room and uh, listening to the focus zzz, up, zzz, down, you know that probably the surgeon is pressed biopic. Mm -hmm. The biggest advantage of the ingenuity is that it's pressed biopic free. It's far vision. So it will extend my, um, <laughs> let's say, surgical life expectancy. <laughs> because, because uh, you know, now we need to uh, load the lenses under the microscope. Before that, it was a piece of tape to load it without. But the press biopia is something which uh, hits hard, actually, and the ingenuity might be a solution for a surgeon. Perfect, excellent, great to know. I, I might uh, fill in with the fun fact. Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, and that is, I underwent uh, all knee surgery one year ago. Right. So I've, I've been using ingenuity as with my own lenses for six years, and last year with, with artificial lenses. No difference. No that difference was, whatsoever. Yeah, really um, it was just go ahead with the same. So, if someone of you have a cataract or want to t to get rid of your your presbyopia, <coughs> you, can, you can you can quietly um, remain in the same surgical settings mm -hmm. and do the same. So that is all. It was a relief for me to to to, to experience that. It's really interesting. Excellent. As I said, when you compare the color images of analog system and the digital one. Uh, you might not find so much of a difference, but when you apply a filters which can enhance your tissue perception and uh, ability to um, use, for example, less dyes uh, during the capsule rexis, when we started to enhance the image, we reduced our dyes. We are using obviously dyes in white cataracts, but uh, we have a fun fact actually when we uh, receive the patient in the OR, it, it's written Brunescent cataract or advanced cataract. And when you put it under microscope with the filter, and it's like everything is there. Fundus reflex. And until you bury your tip and you actually see how thick is this, mm -hmm. you are like, oh, this is a nuclear cataract. Mm -hmm. So the digital filters are here to stay. I think. Yeah, that's uh, really interesting, really good. Um, Lucan, is it possible to organize uh, remote observation and mentoring sessions with the ingenuity? Yes, most definitely. With the uh, uh, normal influencer tools, you, you can organize even uh, uh, observation with the VR glasses, uh, which are available. And uh, for example, you might be here in Barcelona and uh, have your colleagues in, uh, or let's say, in the other part of the world during, uh, uh, with the connection with internet, we can see in real time in 3D, 4K, what the surgeon is uh, doing. We can communicate. Obviously, the communication at the moment would be on a separate, uh, separate audio line, but for the visualization, we can see simultaneous, simultaneously and depending from the encoder, it might be even with a low latency. So uh, the ingenuity, as I said, as a multimedia center of our operating room might be a step uh, open door to the future because the robotic surgery will need visualization also. So it's doable at the moment, remote observation and setting and of course mentoring uh, if you want to guide your colleague what to do um, in the future. We will see. Yeah. Probably robotics something. Mm -hmm. We hope. <laughs> yeah. Over to you to for that one. Um, no, that was, that's fantastic. For you know, mentoring training, it'd be amazing that we can you know can do that remotely and, and, and support people in that way. Um, thank you. Well, it's been a fascinating session. I've, I've really, really enjoyed it. Um, thank you so much, Sumit, uh, Kel, uh, Oppmann and Lucan for a, a, a brilliant um, uh, session showing us how amazing the Ingenuity 1.5 is. And thank you to, to all of you for, for staying. It's been a really good session. Thank you.